I'm going to set up a simple three node MySQL cluster on top of a star cluster controlled Amazon AWS node network. The MySQL cluster will have a master node, one data node, and one SQL node. I will show you how to install a non default MySQL cluster where the config and data directories are placed in non standard locations. The first step to take is to start a three node cluster network. I've already edited the star cluster configuration file to tell star cluster to start three nodes. I've decided to name this network MySQL cluster to reflect what I'm about to attempt. It will take a few moments for the star cluster network to come online. Star cluster will take care of the host names. It will apply the names master, node 001 and node 002 which will make editing the configuration files and also SSHing between nodes easier. Once the star cluster has completed starting, you can SSH connect onto the master node using the built-in star cluster command, star cluster SSH master MySQL cluster. To confirm the node members of the network, the command qstat f can be used. You can see it here that there are three star cluster nodes. In this simple MySQL cluster, we're going to assign the master node as the MySQL management node, node 001 as the MySQL data node, and node 002 as the SQL node. When you start up a MySQL cluster, the order in which you start the member node is going to be critical. You must start the management node first, then all of the data nodes, and finally all of the SQL nodes. For convenience, I've placed all of the necessary commands for each type of node in its own script. Here are the three scripts, data node, management node, and SQL node. Let's take a look at the management node script first. If you're going to use scripts to start up your MySQL cluster, you should set this mode to non-interactive so that your run is not interrupted. The first step on each node is to uninstall, delete, and purge any trace of existing MySQL installs. This is what this section of commands does. You must also use the MySQL cluster versions of the database binaries and ensure that previous MySQL installs do not interfere. A MySQL client is also provided as part of the MySQL cluster install. To install the MySQL cluster management node, I start by wgetting the latest MySQL cluster package to my temp directory and then I unzip it. The only binaries the master nodes need from this package are the NDB management programs. I'm copying them to the user local bin directory. Once the step is complete, I'm going to do some housekeeping and remove everything in the temp directory. I've decided to put all of my data and config files for the MySQL management node in a non standard directory, and the location I've chosen is var lib MySQL cluster. The configuration file config.ini will be generated and placed in this directory from within the script. I mark the beginning and the end of the text for the config file with an EOF marker. Here are the contents of the file. At the top is a section called NDBD default. This is where the options affecting the database processes and all data nodes are placed. Since we're putting together a simple three node database cluster, there is no room to replicate any data nodes, so the number of replicas must be set to one. Next is the NDB management section. This is where the options for the management node are placed. The host names have already been set by star cluster, and you can take advantage of this by using the simple host names in the SQL config files instead of the IP addresses. Here I state that the management node is the master cluster node. You could use the IP address if you wanted to. We also define here where the data directory is for the master node. We need to inform the MySQL cluster management process of all the data and SQL nodes on its network. This example only has one of each, so there is only need for one entry for each type. Entries for the data nodes begin with ndbd. Following our simple design, the MySQL data node will be placed on node 001. This host name is stated in the ndbd section along with the location of the data directory we've chosen. Entries for SQL nodes begin with mysqld. The SQL node is placed on star cluster node 002 in this example. We state the host name in this MySQL section. At the very bottom of the management script, one last command is issued, the command to start the master node. 
Since this is a non-standard install, you must pass in to the install script the location of the config dir, and also directly reference the config file. If you don't do this, the master node will fail out when trying to start up. It should really be clever enough to detect the config file once you've given it the config dir, but I think this is a bug. That's all for the MySQL cluster master node. Next, I'm going to review the contents and the commands of the script for the data nodes. Again, all traces of any existing MySQL installs are removed. We install libaio1, which is important for database and advanced applications. The cluster won't run without this. At this point, I also create the MySQL user and group. As before, I wget the MySQL cluster package, but this time I'm only interested in the following programs the ndbd and the ndbmth. ndbd is the process that handles all the data in the tables using ndb cluster storage engine. ndbmth is just the multi thread version of it. So we've already set the data directory location on the master node configuration file. So we're going to create this here. I'll make the directory user local MySQL data. I'm going to remove any MySQL configuration files, that's if they exist. The configuration file for the data node is much simpler and is located at etcmy.cnf, which will be created from within this script. This file has two entries. The first entry contains options for MySQLD. I set it here to run the NDB storage engine. Databases in a cluster must be defined to run using the NDB engine. The second entry contains options for MySQL cluster, the MySQL cluster process. I just tell this node where it can find the management server. This is simple as it's set as master. Again, you could use an IP address here if you wanted. Mark the end of the text file for the file with an EOF marker. Finally, to start up the data node, the command ndbd is issued and is placed here at the end of the script. Now I'm going to review the code needed to set up the last type of node, the SQL node. The commands in this section are identical to the ones in the data node script I've just covered. The same procedure is followed on the SQL node until we wget the MySQL cluster package. On SQL nodes, the whole MySQL cluster package is needed. <clears throat> I copy it all after unzipping to the user local directory. Then I'm creating a soft link from user local MySQL cluster. The configuration file for the SQL nodes are almost identical to the data nodes. Again, they're located at etc my.cnf. The first two entries are the same. There is an extra entry at the end, mysqld, to state the location of the cluster install base directory. This is set to the soft link we've just created. And again, we mark the end of the file with an EOF marker. A short note on non-default installs. There may be reasons to move the data directory away from the default install location, which is what I've done here. The new location I've chosen is set to user local MySQL cluster data. To prevent errors and run a successful install, the app armor must be updated. This is what this section of code does. Once modified, the app armor service must be reloaded. So it looks like we're ready to install the MySQL database. To install the database, the MySQL install DB script is run, and the following options have to be fed in. The user, the base directory location, and the data directory location, and also the location of the default MySQL configuration file. The MySQL safe server startup script should then be copied to the user bin directory, and also the MySQL client that's included should be also copied to the user bin directory. To run the cluster, you have to make sure the correct permissions are set in the base directory, which is what I do here with the commands chown and change group. The server config file mysql.server has to be copied across to etc init.d, and also it must be told where the base and data directories are because we've changed that location. So I'm using a sed here to edit the file. Then the run commands rc must be updated for this file. Then just a little housekeeping to remove any remaining files in the temp directory. The final step to start up the MySQL cluster is to start up this SQL node, which is done by the command service mysql.server start. I'm going to upload all of these scripts to the star cluster we've 
started earlier. To connect to the master node on the star cluster, you should use the star cluster ssh master command, then state the name of the cluster to connect to, and which is here my SQL cluster. It's time to see the scripts running. So here I run the management node script. And at the very end, you can see that the cluster management server is up and running. Next, to connect to the data node on node 001, this is done by SSHing from within the master node of the star cluster. And I'm going to run the data node script. You can see here that the data node is up and running and is connected to the master node. Finally, I'm going to connect to the SQL node, node 002, and run the SQL node script. You can see that the MySQL node is now up and running. So, all three types of nodes are now up and running, which means the MySQL cluster has been successfully installed and started, and it's available for use. You can verify this by connecting to the master node. Once on the master node, start the management tool, type in show, and here you can see side by side the simple cluster design we've put together, and also the running MySQL cluster data.